Welcome back everybody. Halloween is just around the corner. So I've got another creepy composite image for all you ghouls and goblins out there. I'll be blending this supposedly haunted hallway, this spider web, and this image of a creepy otherworldly nun all into one spooky picture. Let me show you how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. I started with this image of a spider web that I got from pexels.com. I want to isolate it from its green background so that I can use only the web itself in the windows of the hallway. To see things better, I'll go to Layer and then New Fill Layer. My color is already set to black. I'll just grab this new layer and drop it below the spider web layer. Next, on my Mac, I can hold Option and click on the Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel to bring up these mask options. I'll select Luminosity Range Mask. You'll see this panel with a graph on it come up. I'm going to add a node to the far right side by clicking on the line at the top. Then, I'll add a second node and drag it to the bottom. This will mask out all of the dark and mid-tones, leaving only the brightest. Then, I'll play around with the nodes a bit to get in as much of the web as I can without the green background. All right, that worked great, but I don't think I can get in the right side of the web this way. So, with the web layer selected, I'm going to right-click on it to turn this into a single pixel layer. Then, I'll use my Erase tool from the left-hand toolbar to erase away the part I don't want. Since this is a mask, I could have just used a black-coloured paintbrush on the mask layer to do the same thing. I just didn't think about that when I filmed it. Sorry about that. Anyway, to recreate the rest of the web, I'll just use my pen tool to draw in the strands of web that I erased. I'll set the colour to white and raise up the line thickness using the slider. All right, now I'm going to select the web layer and then click on the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel. I'll select Color Overlay, click on the color box, and then use the color wheel to change the overlay to white. Last thing for the web is to select both layers, right-click on them, and select Group. Then, I'll right-click on them again and select Rasterize to put them into a single pixel layer. I can then go to the menu and select Edit Copy. Open up my hallway image and select Edit Paste to put the web onto a new layer of its own. Okay, I'll resize the web a bit smaller by dragging on the corner nodes. Then, I'll right-click on the little dot on the right to hide the layer for now. I'll come back to it in a while, but first, I want to work on the hallway some. As you can see, it's way too bright for ghosts to roam. They prefer the dark. So, I'll go to the Adjustments tab at the bottom of the Layers panel, and I'll select Brightness and Contrast. I'll lower the brightness way down, and... I'll raise up the contrast a bit. All right, that's good for now. Next, I'm going to recolor the window a bit to give a bit of spooky glow. To do this, I'll use the pen tool to make a selection of all the windows. I'll just make a curve by clicking a series of dots around the first window. Then, if I want to add all the windows to the same selection, I can click on the Add New Curves to Selected Curves Object button and then enclose my other windows with the pen tool as well. I'll speed this up a bit because this video is already going to be way longer than I want. All right, now with all the windows surrounded by pen tool dots, I'll click on the selection button on the top left toolbar. This brings out those marching ants that show my selection. Next, I'll go to Layer in the menu, then New Fill Layer, and I'll change the color to a dark blue. Next, I'll go to my Blending Modes drop down at the top of the Layers panel, and I'll scroll down slowly. I'm not sure the exact look I want, but I'll know it when I see it. Ah, uh, I really like this green tint look best. I think I'll go with the Subtract Blend Mode. All right, I'm going to start putting things together here. First, I'll duplicate the hallway layer in case I need it later. But I'll click the little dot to hide it. Then I'll drag the brightness adjustment onto the top background layer. I'll select the fill layer and the top background layer together and click the group button at the bottom of the layers panel to group them together. Then I'll right click on the group and scroll down to rasterize to put the whole thing into a single pixel layer. 
Okay, now I'm going to turn my spider web layer back on, make it a bit smaller, and then press Command or Control J to duplicate it. For this one, I'll right click on the duplicate, scroll down to transform, and select flip horizontal. Then, I'll make it a bit smaller so the right side fits along the edge of the window. I'll drag it into place, and then I'll click on the perspective tool that I have in my left hand toolbar. Now I can use the little nodes on the corners to fit the web nicely into place. Alright, I'll do this same thing for three more windows. I'll speed this up a bit so you don't get too bored. Just remember that Command or Control duplicates, you can size it with the nodes and then you can use the Perspective tool to warp the image to fit the perspective of the window. OK, with the webs in place, I'll select the top web layer and bottom web layer while holding Shift to select all four. Then, I'll right-click and scroll down to Group to group them together. Now, with the group selected, I'll just lower the opacity a bit as they seem a little too bright to me. Alright, next I'll go to the creepy nun image I already have opened up. I'll use my artistic text tool from the left-hand toolbar to remove her from the background. It doesn't have to be too perfect of a selection as you'll see later, but I'll remove this excess at the top by holding Option or Alt while brushing it away. I'll go to Edit Copy to copy the image and then move to my project and select Edit Paste to add the scary old lady into my project. Next, I'll use the corner nodes to make her smaller and move her into the bottom middle of the canvas. I forgot to record it, but the next thing I did was to go to the blending modes at the top of the layers panel and scroll down to select linear light. This gives her somewhat of a transparent ghost-like quality. Okay, next I'll lower the opacity down a bit to make her even more transparent. Then I'll click Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Then with the bottom none layer selected, I'll go to the live filters button and select Gaussian blur. 18 or 19 pixels should be enough to blur out those rough edges and give her even more of a ghostly persona. All right, now I'll select both none layers, right click on them and scroll down to group. Then with the group layer selected, I'll click Command or Control J to duplicate the group and make another none out of thin air. I'll place this none on the left and make her a bit smaller. Then I'll click Command or Control J again to make a third none. I'll place her on the other side. Now, for one of my favorite effects, I'm going to click on the New Pixel Layer button at the bottom of the Layers panel to create a new layer at the top. I'll then select Filter in the menu, then Noise, and then Pearl in Noise. This will create a fog-like effect, which I can adjust using the sliders. I'll click Apply, and then click the Mask Layer button. Next, I'll get the gradient tool from the left toolbar and drag it from the bottom middle up to the top of the image. I want the fog to be higher in the middle around the nun's head. So, with the mask layer selected, I'll grab paintbrush tool, make sure the paint color is set to white, lower the opacity and flow about halfway, and paint in some extra fog. Now for the finishing touches. I still think it's a bit bright in the hallway. So I'll select the spider web layer and then click on the adjustments button again to bring up the brightness and contrast adjustment. I'll lower the brightness on the bottom two layers just a bit more. And finally, I'll paint in a little more fog. I'll select my paintbrush tool lower the opacity and flow down to about a quarter and paint in a little foggy mist around the top of the fog to blend it in a bit. All right, that's about it for today. 
If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.